Unity Water is proud to sponsor this podcast series because we believe great news, great solutions and great outcomes deserve to be shared. See what we're all about at unitywater.com. You're listening to the Australian Water Association's podcast series. I'm Hazel Flynn and I'm joined now by Darren Cash, Customer Hub Manager for Sydney Water, to talk about Sydney Water's new customer focused approach. Hello, Darren. Hi, Hazel. Um, so, Sydney Water covers a huge area. We're talking about Sydney, the Blue Mountains, the Illawarra. You've got something like 4.8 million customers. And you have an average of 200,000 service fault callouts a year. What was the traditional process for dealing with those faults? Uh, the traditional process is kind of very reactive. So we wait for customers to contact us to tell us there's a problem. So effectively we're using our customers as our, our sensors. Um, and what we're doing with Customer Hub is trying to move away from that reactive approach to a more proactive. So while there will still be some faults that get reported by customers, um, a lot of them, uh, or a lot of customers um, will be contacted by us before they even notice there's a fault. All right, um, so let's go back to the old system for a second. I turn on my tap, no water comes out, I ring up and I say, this is my address, I've got no water coming out. What would then happen? Um, typically, uh, we would dispatch uh, crews to, to the site. Uh, or if we knew that there was an interruption at the site, we would tell the customer, hey, the water's off because we need to do a repair. Um, the customer would typically say, well, why couldn't you have told me beforehand? Um, and it's a reasonable question. Um, I guess we've always hidden behind a little bit our operating license, which says for emergency works, we don't need to notify customers. Yeah, okay. And you were surveying customers on their satisfaction, you know, during those days, during that process, and the results weren't too bad, but you felt that that really wasn't telling the whole story. Why not? Yeah, we, we have been um, getting customer satisfaction survey results for quite some time, um, but it's not in real time. It's uh, quite after the fact. In some cases, we might contact a customer three weeks, four weeks, a couple of months after they've actually spoken to Sydney Water, so it's very hard to get some um, real meaningful feedback from them on what actually took place. Uh, so with Customer Hub, we're actually getting that feedback now in real time. Right. Um, so at the completion of a, an experience for the customer, the customer will receive a notification message and get asked to provide some feedback. Excellent. Well, I mean, I'm very keen to hear a lot more about that, but here's a devil's advocate question. Why does it matter whether your customers are fully satisfied or not? Because it's a monopoly situation. It's not like they can take their business elsewhere if they're unhappy. No, but um, the, I mean, Sydney Water is transforming into a customer-centric organisation. Um, we realise that you know that the customers are our our business, uh, and we, we need to move away from the old approach of being very asset-centric. We've always been good at digging holes, fixing pipes, you know, um, providing reliable water supplies to people, um, but actually understanding the issues that customers are experiencing and, and working through those with the customers, it's, it's a very important thing for us as an organisation to be, to be moving towards. And your name for this new philosophy is Livestream, is that right? Yeah, that's our, uh, our transformation program that's been in place for some time now. It forms part of our corporate plan. Um, and you know, one of our key corporate objectives or strategic objectives as, as part of our corporate plan is to have customer at the heart. Um, like many utilities, uh, you know, it seems to be a fairly common um, objective. But uh, yeah, actually having customer at the heart and moving from an asset-centric or an asset-focused business to a, a customer-centric organisation. And you set up the customer hub in order to do that. So. Can you tell us about where you trialled it and how many people were involved and how it worked? Yeah, so Sydney Water services um, around 4.8 million customers in total. Um, we wanted to give it a good shot in terms of a pilot, so we, we picked one of our three geographic areas, um, the western part of Sydney, um, which is still a huge area, um, still a, over, uh, sorry, over a million people served in that area. So. Um, pretty decent size um, pilot project. Mm, absolutely, and how did it run? What happened? Uh, well, we kicked off uh, in September last year. We, we had a, 
uh, a very tight time frame to deliver on and we, we met that in September. Um, we, we, we built uh, a whole bunch of technology and processes to, to enable that go live to happen. Uh, and it was done in a very agile sort of um, uh, way. We used the agile project methodology, which essentially means that you don't spend months and months and months you know, writing specifications and, and requirements. Um, you just get straight into it and start building and refining as you go. Uh, and one of the big success stories we had with, with that approach was we actually um, built some of the technology as a prototype released it to the wider audience right across Sydney Water uh, and said play with it, try and break it, do what you can with it, um, tell us what you need, um, crowdsourced ideas and had those ideas um, very quickly get turned into a, a new version of that prototype. So by the time we went live um, our um, spatial tool that we developed was already up to version 34 in, in development and we had about uh, 250 users across Sydney already before it actually got released. What an interesting process. Can you remember any of the specifics that you know that you did the ideas that you did crowdsource things that people thought oh this would be a great little addition? Oh yeah there's uh, there's a whole list of them so we've got a list um, I, I don't even know long, how long the list is now we're still working through it um, so we, we, went, we went live with a, a minimum viable product and um, with the, the intention to always continue to build on that. So we will work our way down through the list. Um, but you know, there's, there's, there's a whole, whole range of them um, uh, using um, a site call, uh, called Near Maps, um, linking to, to Near Maps as a, as a way of looking at historical aerial photos. Um, that's, that was one idea, um, linking to customer contingency plan so if we're planning a, a, a shutdown in an area and we can see that there's some critical business customers there um, we don't have to go searching for contingency plans they're right there at our fingertips so we can in, in the heat of the moment we can access them and and try and work out our best to, to help that customer through through the interruption um, so yeah there's a there's a whole raft of suggestions but I, I can't think of too well, many examples some, off the top of my head some good examples there and and let's say I am a customer and I, I was in Western Sydney, you know, so the new customer hub was established. I then ring up, I say there's no water in the tap. What's the difference now for the experience for me? Yeah, so we, in terms of customer hub, we, we brought together three uh, teams, um, our fault call operators who take that call, our scheduling and dispatch area that um, essentially turns the piece of work into um, something that, that happens in the field. Um, and our customer advocates who um, have a field liaison presence with customers to help them through difficult circumstances um, and also um, manage complaints. So we brought those three teams together and one of the, uh, the things we did in terms of the fault call operators was we introduced a, a, a bit of tweaking of the, the scripting that was used, um, the, the faults manual that was followed to make sure that we were very empathic in our response to the customer uh, and um, tried to understand what the customer issue was before trying to diagnose what the asset issue was. Oh, interesting. So I might ring up and, and you might be sympathetic because, I don't know, I haven't been able to have a shower to go to work or much more about the life exactly, circumstances. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you have no water, but why do you have a pressing need for water without asking a question that way? Um, we try and seek that information so that we can um, best help you through that situation. So if you happen to be having a, a big barbecue later that day or something like that, then at least we understand that issue and we can try and um, help to, uh, to restore the water supply um, in time or we can provide you with alternative arrangements. Interesting. And you also are much, much more um, uh, instant, I suppose, in the way that you're contacting people to let them know about upcoming schedule disruptions. So, for instance, letterboxing and leafleting was a very common way of doing it before. What are the new methods? Yeah, so we, we've started using SMS and email uh, as a very timely notification method. So letterbox drops, we still do. Um, our uh, licence requires us to do notifications to everybody um, in advance for planned work. For unplanned work, we've never really done any notifications. Historically, we've just turned the water off and tried to get it back on as quickly as we can. Um, and what we're doing now is using 
technology using SMS messages and, and emails to send those notifications out on the day that, that it's going to take place. Um, that was another issue with the letterbox drops is people will get a letter 28 days in advance and then on the day they forget that they got the letter um, and so they still ring up and say why well, have we got no water. Uh, so yeah, using SMS and email to, to um, provide those notifications to customers. And what kind of customer feedback have you had? Um, customer feedback has been very good. Um, we are using a net promoter score as a, a measure of a customer experience. Um, it's on a scale of minus 100 to positive 100 uh, and we're currently sitting around 50, um, which is um, very good on that, on that scale. Um, anything above zero is kind of more positive than negative, which is always good. Um, and yeah, the response has been really good. Um, one of the key things that we do do with the customer feedback is if a customer has a negative experience, so if a customer scores as a six out of 10 or below, um, we have a, a team that then calls the customer back in real time and tries to recover the experience. So they will say, hi Hazel, um, understand you've had a bad experience with Sydney Water, is there more work that we need to do? Uh, is there something else that we can learn from the experience so that we don't have the same thing happen to another customer? Smart thinking, you know, Bill Gates says you learn much more from your unhappy customers than you do from your happy ones. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And also you, this, um, the feedback that you're getting, you're getting really moments in time, kind of real time feedback now, aren't you, without yeah. that gap that you were talking about before. That's right, it is in real time and we have that real time service recovery. So we get feedback on um, if customers choose to provide it after the call, so how we handled the call. Uh, we get feedback at the completion of work so that we get feedback on the, the whole overall experience for customers. And we also get feedback on um, water interruptions. And once the water's restored, we'll ask customers, yeah, did we do okay? Did we keep you informed? Did we provide you with enough notice? That sort of stuff. So Western Sydney was a trial. Uh, when does it go system wide? Uh, we are in the process of um, rolling out to the full area of operations now. Uh, it's just a case of establishing the permanent uh, customer hub structure, um, a permanent location, um, and we expect that to be uh, around September this year that we'll go live to, to the whole area of operations. That's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. It's a very exciting times. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming in and talking to us. You're welcome. That was Darren Cash, Customer Hub Manager for Sydney Water. Thanks for joining us.